Hi, my name's Tim McGuire. And I'm here today and I'm gonna show you one of the most requested recipes that I make. It is the popover. Now a popover is a type of bread, but unlike, a, it's a different type of bread because it's more like a batter bread. Like, it's like a cooked pancake and it steams up because of the eggs and it turns into a great big mushroom. Now with any popover recipe, they're all basically the same. They have the same ingredients. The whole entire thing is the steps in, in making these. Technique for this is what it's all about. First thing that's very important that you must do is turn on and preheat the oven. Now this oven says it goes to 550. I've clocked it at about 450, but whatever your oven does, turn it up as high as you can and at least have it on for at least 30 minutes. So when you put it in there, the oven's as hot as it can possibly be. And with that, you get the oven spring and it really makes the popover wanna pop. As I said, it's not so much the recipe itself, it's the techniques. And what I've learned from my past errors is, the main thing here is, is one thing is that ingredients have to be room temperature. The second thing is after the initial blend, you must let the batter rest. With these two things, you're on the right road to success for making popovers. Now the ingredients are simple. Eggs, flour, fat, and liquid. Liquid, you may use anything that your heart desires. Beer, fruit juice, soda. It's all up to your imagination. I just use milk because this is what I have and it's almost out of date so I have to use it. This is one of the flavoring agents because as we go along with this, what we're doing is we're going to layer flavors. Next is another flavor. This is going to be a textural thing. Poppy seeds. This is going to coat the outside of it. Salt, of course. Now, what, what I'm going to use here is just simple things that I think that everybody has in their apartments. That's why I'm using a blender. You know, um, you could just easily use a bowl with a whip and, and mix it up. The first ingredient that we use is the liquid. Now, take my liquid measuring cup, and it is one and a half cups of liquid. The next ingredient is the flour. One cup. Fill it up. And then just level it off. Try not to make a mess. And then add it straight in. Next is the eggs. So I add four. Now just add the eggs. All right, the next is the fat. Two tablespoons of it. All right, next is salt. What I do is put in one good solid teaspoon of it. Next is the flavoring agent. What we're doing here is layering the flavor. So what we're gonna do here is, I try to use everything. So the zest has so much flavor. I'm just gonna put the zester right over it, maybe half of it, you know, because we don't really want it to be so overpoweringly lemony, but just, uh, just enough. It's so floral. So there it is, it smells wonderful. Very lemony. The next step is blend it. So start off slow, pulse it to get it blending. And now we turn this sucker on full blast maybe about 45 seconds to a minute. Using the blender, it really blends it up really fast, you know, the beauty of mechanics. Now, here's the simple part. Just sit and wait. It's gotta sit for at least 30 minutes so it gets room temperature and it rests. All right, now, now you have to decide what you're gonna cook it in. You could use basically anything you want. You could use a muffin tin, you could use a ramekin, something that's like a Pyrex that's very heat proof, like a coffee cup could work as well. Um, I've tried everything and gotten great results, but the best results that you will achieve making these popovers is with a popover tin. Very small on the bottom and a lot bigger on top. So when it starts to cook from the heat from the bottom, it pushes this thing up and it really puffs up there. So like a great big mushroom. The thing about it is the secret of success with most, most baking things is not washing them. Now it, it's all right if you do do it, but it creates this non-stick film on there, which is called a patina. That assures me, without washing it, that this, they will be non-stick on there and they will come out as big and popped as possible. What I'm gonna do is just slightly spray it with non-stick spray, just to be safe that they don't stick. Because if they stick, then they will not be able to pop. Now with this, I just take the poppy seeds, and again, you could use anything, as long as it's not too heavy. Next. I take the popover batter and I fill it to about three quarters full. You don't want to go too far because if you fill it up too much more, then it will overflow. Put a little bit more poppy seeds on the top. 
Now here again, you can use anything. Sesame seeds work really well as well. All right, now they're all filled up and they're ready for the oven. Now, always remember, safety first. The oven's been on now for about 30 minutes at 500 degrees, so this sucker's really hot now. Now, when I open up the door, the heat is gonna waft out. So please, stand back, open it up, and allow the heat to release. Otherwise, you're gonna burn your eyebrows off. Try to fast so you don't let all the heat out in the back center, and that's it. Now, with the popovers, this is another step that's pretty important. With this, with this oven, we don't have a glass door. So I'm gonna have to rely on my nose. Um, you cannot open these things prematurely because before it caramelizes and sets up, if you open it up too fast, the popovers will flop. So you have to judge it by your nose. It's really, really easy. Just think about this. They normally cook about 40, 45 minutes, right? Now, if something smells burned, it's normally burned. So trust your nose and come over and give the oven a sniff and you, you can pretty much tell when they're done. Looks golden brown. They are definitely ready. So now let's have a look at the finished product. See, because of the shape of the popover tin, it allows it to pop up just like a mushroom. See, nice and hot. Now here, you could eat these things with anything. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Be careful for the steam. Nice and crispy on the outside and nice and soft and creamy on the inside. Now what I'm gonna serve it with is a little bit of salted butter and strawberry rhubarb jam. They're delicious for breakfast or for lunch or for dinner. Some butter. Mm. Nice and crispy. So good. Mm. All right, well there you have it. I try to show just how easy it is to make these magical popovers. My name is Tim McGuire, and thanks for watching.